I don't know, but I love it. They started being very multiple in their fronts, overloads and twists and, you know, getting guys free coming around the corner. And those the speed on the outside, guys, is that Jack, you'll know. Just because a guy weighs 240 pounds, when he comes off that edge and he is flying and you're a big guy and he's down there, it's it's just, it's a different, it's a different, different world. cat. And you yeah. saw him, you saw that left tackle, Jackie, try and, and jump him and Absolutely. he just beat him right out of his stance. So right out of his When stance. you see a tackle trying jumping in like that, you know he's panicking. So I think that uh, they've kind of found their stride on defense. Uh, if they'll be multiple, they'll create a lot of problems for him. And I do think that if Camp can just hang on to that football now and keep Cooper yeah. Cup involved throughout the game, not just mm-hmm. at the end of winter, you know, for big plays, because he is such a dynamic player. I, to me, he's the MVP of the league. Mike, I want to get back to the Bucks game, and I, I want to look at their coaching uh, decisions to call the game plan. And I, I was kind of happy to see. I want your take on the Rams going after the pass on, on early rundowns. And uh, because the Bucks were so stiff against the run, do you agree with that philosophy? It worked well. I thought that with the play calling was was very good in this game for the Rams. You know, they, they started to get into what we call that bear front or the double eagle. And that's a run stop defense, and they're matched up one on one. When that happens, it happened to us in the Super Bowl against Tennessee. They're daring you to throw the football. And you have to be good enough to do that and do and be successful with it. Hey, you know, you know, Mike, one of the things that, that that kind of jumped out at me, and I was really concerned about this. They they gave Cam Akers you know, a whole lot of carries for a guy that just been back a couple of weeks and he had those two big turnovers and I questioned whether or not they gave it, but I think you just gave me the answer. You think that they gave him the ball more than Sonny Michelle because he's a more dynamic guy, probably going to get more yards per carry than Sonny Michelle. And that's what he, that, that was what he was willing to settle for in the running game. Just more yards per carry. There's no question, Jackie. He's, He's a he's way more explosive than Sony, and and he's a good back. But Cam Makers is a very unusual back. And you see, even the one that he fumbled there, he busted that in. He was going to get five or six yards for yeah. it, but yeah. they have to resolve that that fumbling issue. But he's he's so strong in the legs. Uh, he's a violent runner, which I love. Um, he he's the addition to that offense that they need. I, I believe that, but. Again, he's got to protect that ball now. Yeah. Right. Hey, hey, no Mike, Mike you've talked about this on our podcast that we do together a bunch of times, but now, now give me some clarification on this because now it looks like it's going to happen. The 49ers have beaten the Rams now six straight. Garoppolo has put that number on them. How hard is it to beat someone seven straight? I mean, can, can they really do that? And what would you tell your teams? What would you tell the Rams right now if you're going to play these guys? Yeah, I think you don't even talk about that to me. Uh, that, that's water under the bridge. I'm more concerned about that team just went up and put a thump on what I thought was the best team in the league in, in, in Green in Bay. Yeah. 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 So I think the biggest issue, you need to go back and look at yourself this year against them and look at what you didn't do right that would have made the difference in winning that game. And I think in the first one, they just didn't hold up against the run. They, they just didn't. Uh, they've got to continue to be multiple up front tighter in coverages, get Ramsey on their number one. They yeah. did that later in the game. It didn't help them, but at least it's the right thing to do, you know. And then offensively, just let it open. Just let it fly. Don't don't be conservative in this game. You'll get your big runs because they're scared to death of Cooper Cup and, you know, the two other Jefferson and, you know, Beckham. Those are three receivers that you have to double either any of them to shut them down. Right. Yeah. They're a violent team right now in offense, and they're just kind of hitting their stride. They just can't turn the ball over. You know, Mike, you, you, you've talked about the wide receivers. You talked about the quarterback. You talked about the running back. And you mentioned to me how important we were talking about that left tackle with Vaughn Miller over there. Yes. The Rams offensive line, I've, I've maintained all season long, they have to be given an opportunity to run back, block so they don't have to pass block all the time. All of that pass blocking, you know, renders you vulnerable and, you know, insecure if you're not doing it, you know, for 10 or 15 years in this league. So uh, how much do you think they need to really focus on uh, letting these guys beat the, the front up in front of them before they start throwing, chucking the ball all over the place? They got some good pass rushes in San Francisco. They've had excellent pass rushers. The biggest issue, I think, is with that running back back, like Marshall Falk. We didn't have to run the ball a lot for everybody to play the run. The fact that he was such a dynamic player when we stuck him back there, it changed their pass rush. Unless it's a third down, going to throw it kind of a situation, 
they do have to now with acres they have to play the run and the, the rams to throw the football they want to be in a play action mode that's who they are mm -hmm. and i think that blends it very well together that offensive line today played their best football of the season i thought i thought they were uh, exceptional today i thought they were violent and physical I never felt good about them trying to protect the quarterback, but they did an excellent job. Yeah, excellent and Jackie, job. to me, the inside three guys are, are the is the issue. You've got to let the quarterback step up. I think the key play in that game was on fourth down when when Brady threw and missed on that throw. Remember that dig right he missed? Oh, when yeah. you look at the replay of that thing, there wasn't anybody in front of him, but he was stepping back trying to throw the ball because he used to die guy gun shot. Right. Because they got such a great yeah. push on him in the front. Right. And I think yeah. in the past, that's been kind of the Achilles, not so much the edge, but they had gotten such a good push. The 49ers have gotten such a good push inside on them. And if they can shore that up, and, and you know, we used to say, Jackie, two and a half yards from the line of scrimmage, just don't let anybody pass that. You know, tighten it up, buddy. Tighten it up. Tighten <laughs> yeah, it up. they can do that. But I do think that. You don't want to get in a they're not, they've never been a good two minute team that's just not who they are they're not geared for that the offensive line's not geared to that you know if they can play from a lead and continue and mix it and match it where they want uh and keep the third downs in the six or less where they can get cooper cup on an option route shoot uh just don't turn the ball to protect that doggone football man right right uh, if uh, if you are at home right now and you are just tuning in, uh, we just want to say hello and welcome. We've broken into programming today because, uh, well, the Rams have just uh, pulled off a great win down in Tampa Bay, beating Tom Brady and company 30 to 27. Now they advance to the NFC Championship game in which they will take on the San Francisco 49ers. That is coming up a week from today. So we're going to talk about this and continue to talk about this great win for the Rams today. We're also awaiting to hear from the Rams players down on the podium down in Tampa Bay. Uh, until then let's take a look at the team stats from today's game and and there you have it the Rams with total yards of 428 to 359 for the Buccaneers the turnovers yeah. uh, wow. proved uh, yes. could potentially costly and we saw one late by Cam Akers as he fumbled yeah. away a football you, know, Kyle, you turn the football over twice you got an 80% chance of losing the game they turned it over four, four times. times yeah that was almost catastrophic yes. for them but the Rams yeah. were resilient they came back not a lot of rushing in this game for either team um, and somehow the Rams, uh, well, they had a two touchdown lead in the fourth quarter and they somehow managed to blow that, uh, but uh, were able to hang on uh, thanks to a furious drive at the end of the game. With 18 <laughs> yeah. seconds to go, it looked like the Rams may be settling for overtime and right. instead Matthew Stafford picked up a blitz, threw it downfield, a 44-yard right. pass to Cooper Cup. So perhaps set the up. NFL's MVP. And you, question, yes. and you always question the <laughs> yes. defensive call, the blitz, because this quarterback yeah. can throw the ball under a blitz. When he gets single coverage deep down the field, that's what he loves His to numbers, do. his numbers are great against the blitz, right, Ben? That's why would you blitz him? <laughs> Without a doubt. And, and Matthew Stafford has proven all season long that he's been the best against the blitz, and yeah. yet that's what you did on a critical play critical at play. the end of the game. And <laughs> the guy that Mike March just who called that? Who called that? Anyway. The MVP That's of the right. league was there to haul it in. A <laughs> great single execution, covered. single covered, great execution, great pass, great catch, setting up the game-winning field goal by Matt Gay, and the rest is history. The Rams move on now to the NFC Championship game. All right, we're going to take a timeout here. But coming up, Rams fans are delirious. We're going to go live <laughs> to a local watch party that is still going on right now when we continue with more of Sports Wrap right after this. Eleven Sports Wrap, brought to you by Agua Caliente Casinos. Play it safe and play confidently as we are ready to serve with the best in white glove service. Experience all Agua Caliente Casinos has to offer in a safe, clean environment that